It all began nearly four months ago at the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis, and it ends today. The final organized team activity of the Cowboys offseason, the Blitz, starts now. Pops out to the right, breaks a tackle. They blitz it. Prescott throws it down the right side for Lamb. Caught it! The throw, rush, sacked by Parsons. Heaves it deep down the left side for Gallup. He's got it. Touchdown. It's time to start that summertime clock here at the Star in Frisco. It is the countdown to training camp 2022 as this is the final edition of the Blitz for the Cowboys offseason. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans. And yes, we are now just over five weeks away from that big jet plane departing for Oxnard, California and the start of training camp. I'm not sure if the offseason flew by, but this is a point that we always look forward to because we know California isn't that far away. Yeah, the weather's there. You get 80 degrees maximum, which right now in Texas, everybody's already tired of the heat. We're only a couple weeks in to the heat streak that Texas will go on this summer. However, it's going to be great to get back out and not only to the weather, but back to football, especially after an offseason like the Cowboys have had. It's been a big week uh, for the Cowboys organization. As you know, earlier in the week, World Cup 2026 is coming to AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Jerry Jones was on hand uh, for that and the Cowboys wrapped up their mini camp, but it was unlike any mini camp we've seen before because they were only on the practice field for one day. Yeah, it was supposed to be three days of work and, and like we talked about in the Blitz last week, it was supposed to be a training camp esque level of competition level of practices. That wasn't necessarily the case. They went one more day, finished the install, did everything that Mike McCarthy had envisioned for this Cowboys staff to complete throughout the offseason. They went through all eight phases. They finished up phase eight on Tuesday. But then he said, you know what, Wednesday, let's go have a little fun, a team bonding activity. They go out and they swing some golf clubs rather than trying to swing the leg like Jonathan Garibay through the uprights. Instead, they go out to top golf and have some fun. And then on Thursday, they say, don't worry about coming back. We've done what we needed to do. Mike McCarthy very happy with where his team is at the moment. And he also said the coaching staff knocked it out of the park. Overall, it was a successful summer. And they said that they didn't really need those extra practices in order to have it as successful as it was. Well, and as uh, Jerry indicated to the media on uh, Thursday, the co head coach might be a little lighter in the pocket, but he got the, <laughs> he got things accomplished that he wanted to get accomplished uh, this offseason. And we saw Dalton Schultz back here at the star in Frisco. You know, Kyle, as you look forward uh, up to July 15th, that uh, deadline date to get a long term deal done for him. Uh, that's the news that will be emanating out of the star here in the next few weeks. No doubt about it, because if he plays on the franchise tag this year, there's a very strong possibility that he's not here in 2023. Both sides want to get a deal done. There is talks. There has been a little bit of movement in that regard and maybe him holding out of the final OTA practices, which were not not mandatory. Maybe that got the ball rolling a little bit, but overall, unless Dalton Schultz comes out and has a top two, top three tight end sort of season in the NFL, you would really anticipate him to be on the franchise tag and then maybe walk into free agency next year. So they both want to get a deal done. It's just whether or not they have enough time to do so. But we do know he's at least playing on the franchise tag $10.9 million this year. We're just getting started on this edition of the Blitz. When we come back, how about we take a look at some of these rookies that have made an impression. How about the second round pick Sam Williams next. The Blitz is brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. This segment is brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Welcome back to the Blitz. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans as we wrap up this offseason and we preview training camp 2022. We've got an opportunity over the course of the last five or six weeks to take a look at uh, some of these rookies, particularly in OTAs and in the mini camp this uh, past week, the one day that we did get an observation. And we're going to take a look at some of those guys now. And let's, uh, let's start with a couple of draft picks. Let's start with the second round pick, the defensive end, Sam Williams. I think that he is poised to have a big rookie season. I'm right there with you. And you know how much I love rookies. I'm, I cover the draft. I cover the undrafted free agents. I always like to see who stands out the most in these summer practices to really really put a target on him going into training camp and of course into the preseason. Sam Williams has been that number one guy for me. It seems like every time that they have a practice and they're running team drills, he is in the backfield in some shape, fashion and form. He's shown some lateral ability. He's shown the athleticism, but then also he's shown off strength that I don't necessarily know uh, we anticipated going into these practices without pads on. He's going up against some of these starting second string tackles, and he is winning those battles in the final mini camp practice. The only mini camp practice Sam Williams would have had three to four sacks. I mean, he was right there on the quarterback in the red jersey every single time I looked up. He looks like he is on the right path to having a big breakout rookie year. You know, and and uh, with the loss of Randy Gregory, Cowboys need someone to step up at that. Uh, edge rusher position and he is a likely candidate right there going to be fun to watch his progress in uh, training camp in the preseason games how about at the wide receiver position because uh, obviously with Amari Cooper now with the Cleveland Browns the Michael Gallup injury coming off the ACL number 18 Jalen Tolbert your third round draft pick you had a word there progress and that's exactly what I thought when I looked at Jalen Tolbert in that final mini camp practice and really early on in the summer in the rookie mini camp he didn't get a chance to really get out there and then finally when the veterans joined in in OTAs him and Dak Prescott have been on the same page they've been able to sh to kind of shorten the gap a little bit in terms of the the rookie to veteran quarterback gap he has found the playbook he has studied the playbook and you can tell the preparation has been there because he's beating some of these starting caliber cornerbacks and he is working his way into the conversation for that number three wide receiver even with guys like uh, a James Washington and a semi Fajoko still vying for that spot as well. You know uh, Mike McCarthy talked about at his end of the offseason press conference the maturity level of this draft class and I think those two guys are a couple of guys that he's talking about in Williams and uh, Tolbert. All right how about an undrafted guy. Marquise Bell, there's a real opportunity for a, an undrafted safety to step up and play a lot this year. I agree because outside of J. Ron Curse, Donovan Wilson, Malik Hooker on the backside, it's pretty wide open. I mean, there's guys like Tyler Coyle who was undrafted last year who had a great offseason. Marquise Bell is one of those guys that's in the right place at the right time. There's a lot of question marks surrounding his change of direction, but he is a gamer. You see it right there. He had a big pick uh, uh, in the middle of these practices. That was not his only interception that he had throughout the the offseason of work I really like his straight line speed I like his awareness and he is just a straight up gamer he finds a way to the football has a nose for it and he's going to make some offenses pay at some point throughout the preseason he may be an early candidate for a fan favorite whenever they're playing Seattle and Denver and, and the Chargers later on this year. And, and keep in mind, DeMonte Casey had double digit starts for this Cowboys defense uh, last season, and uh, basically they haven't replaced him as far as uh, as that goes in that uh, secondary, as far as new players on the roster. Maybe Marquise Bell is the guy. Give me some, uh, give me another undrafted guy that uh, you, that's really caught your eye out there. Yeah, how about the cornerback Isaac Taylor Stewart out of USC? He was an undrafted guy, but it was kind of shocking to some out there that he actually went undrafted, but he was a very high priority for this Cowboys front office to go get him, and he has certainly shown out throughout the practices as well. He had probably the play of the week. He had a pick six off of the first play of team drills. Will Greer was at quarterback, rolled to his right, threw it straight into his hand, and then it was the Jets that were impressive from Taylor Britt. Took it all the way to the house and what would have been an easy score for the corner. There's a lot of room to be worked and massaged with underneath the starting three with Jordan Lewis, Anthony Brown, and Trayvon Diggs. Outside of that, he has an opportunity to make this roster play on special teams, sure, but I think he could find his way into the defensive rotation as well. All right, so keep an eye on number 36, and we're all keeping an eye on number four as well. When we come back here on the Blitz, the 
rave reviews that Dak Prescott is getting this offseason. This segment was brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's been huge. I mean, it's been huge for him. Uh, it's been huge for everybody. So uh, I think you, the, all, all the little things that we do, particularly the meetings, the walkthroughs and all that, that they're important, obviously. But um, just just for him to just to have no limits has, has been outstanding. And I think you clearly see it in the way he's moving this year. I mean, you look at his body, he's, he's clearly uh, different than he was you know, last year. So uh, he, he's had a heck of an offseason. Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy talking about QB1. Yes, number four, Dak Prescott. As we welcome you back here to the Blitz, Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans. And it has been impressive seeing Dak Prescott and just a healthy Dak Prescott. You can really see it uh, on the field, uh, his movement abilities and that sort of thing. And it, it's got to be great going forward for this season to see him having a fully active offseason with the guys. And it makes it things different as well off the field in those meetings and, and the ability for him to be hands-on with some of these young receivers, especially with such an inexperienced group. And he even talked about it. He's more lean than he ever has been in his entire career. Because of that, he feels like he's more flexible. He feels like he can add an element to this offense that was wasn't there last year. I mean, the team set records uh, for points with 530, with yards, with over 6,900 yards, but they were ninth in rushing yards per game, and a big element that could add to that is the read option. They did not play that a whole lot last year. Dak Prescott, if he's healthy, flexible, and they could run him a little bit more as a dual threat, it could add something for Kellen Moore overall whenever they get into the latter parts of this season. All right, well, how about we hear from Dak Prescott himself on how much of a difference this offseason it has been for him. I go into each offseason. I'm trying trying to be a better player and person than I was the, the year before. And so I, at this stage, at this point, I definitely feel like I've accomplished that. I think I'm far, um, so, so much further along than I was last year at this time. I mean, just being able to get the team reps, as you said, being able to move more, um, take care of my whole body and just focus on everything and not just my leg. Uh, it's a huge difference. You know, it's interesting. It's something that Dak says he's learned about himself as he's gone along in his NFL career. I can remember talking to him at training camp several years ago, and he talked about the, the fact that after that particular season, he put on like 20 pounds in the, <laughs> in the month after the season. That's when he realized, whoa, I got to watch my diet. I have to really concentrate on that sort of th thing. He even talked back to his time in Mississippi State. He was like, I was a little bigger in Mississippi State. <laughs> I was built differently. I'm built to be athletic, built to be mobile now, where he, he didn't say that doesn't necessarily translate to speed by any chance of the imagination. However, if he's able to be mobile and he can add that element, I think it does help this offense in the future. All right, let's uh, spin it forward towards training camp 2022 when we come back here. Let's look, look, take a look at uh, some of the training camp competitions to expect. You know, with the new CBA rules when it comes to training camp practices, you have to look really closely for the training camp battles. And we're going to dive into those training camp battles that we're going to be watching closely once the team gets to uh, California. And uh, how about we dig in on the defensive tackle battle. Oso Odigazoo, I love what he did as a rookie. Neville Gallimore and Chauncey Golston working as a three technique. Yeah, there's a couple different names there for a reason that well, you want to stop the run, right? That was one of the biggest struggles in 2021. Let's fix that. And, of course, having Neville Gallimore with a fully healthy offseason, hopefully he stays healthy going into the preseason where he got injured last year with that dislocated elbow. And then you add Chauncey Golston to the mix, who was an edge rusher coming out of Iowa, did not play edge rusher at all, or excuse me, interior at all in college, but he was, an ed, or he was inside a little bit during his high school days. They've bulked him up. He's added 20 pounds. Now with him in the mix with Gallimore and with Osa Digizua with that three-technique spot, 
spot. I think we feel a lot more comfortable with that defensive line, and I think that's going to be a surprising uptick from what we saw a year ago. Yeah, and just hopefully everyone can stay healthy. Of course, Gallimore last year uh, just was able to play in five games, yeah. but uh, he really showed a lot, uh, not only that year, but also showed flashes his rookie season as well. How about we uh, move it to the secondary and at the cornerback position, a couple of draft picks from last year, Kelvin Joseph and Nashawn Wright. Yeah, not just draft picks, but these were top 100 draft picks. Uh, Kelvin Joseph in the second round, Nashawn Wright in that third round and pick number 99. This is a year where they need to contribute because, of course, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, they stepped their game up a year ago, had career years in both of their camps. Now what kind of depth do you have at the cornerback position? We know throughout a 17-game NFL season, things are going to happen. There will be injuries. If somebody goes down, who's going to fill in? I would have to think it's one of these two names that would be in that category, especially with Dan Quinn getting his guys a year ago with Nashawn Wright specifically having those traits that a starting cornerback and a Dan Quinn defense could have. Those guys need a big year and they need to find out how that's going to go in Oxnard. And of course, you got Anthony Brown uh, starting a corner opposite of uh, Trayvon Diggs, but we saw, you look at number one there. Now number one, Kelvin Joseph, and uh, the Cowboys would love to see him make the same kind of leap that uh, Trayvon Diggs made going into his second year. Both second round picks. I couldn't, or I, I can't tell you why that wouldn't be the case. They need him to step up and maybe in a different role in that slot position. Not predicting would, 11 picks. That would be interesting <laughs> if that ended up happening, but it would def definitely need to see a big time uptick. All right, how about on offense and how about at the wide receiver position as we talked a little bit about number 18 Jalen Tolbert but James Washington coming over in free agency as well uh, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier and James Washington didn't see any on field action throughout the offseason workouts because of an injury that he's nursing. He should be ready to go for training camp which makes things interesting because Jalen Tolbert has the timing down. Yes he's a rookie. Yes, he was a draft pick, but James Washington as a veteran who's had success in this league previously has not had the same timing, has not had the same reps with QB1. Who's going to emerge in Oxnard? One has an advantage in terms of the recency. The other one has an advantage because he's a veteran and he's played in this league before. Who's going to emerge as that number three wide receiver behind C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup? And uh, you talk about Gallup. Of course, he's coming off the ACL. There's a possibility he might miss, say, the first four games of the year if they put him on pup to start to training camp. Uh, what, what's your prediction on the guy that, that really steps up at that wide receiver position? I'm going to say early on it's James Washington because he's been in this situation before. I think he's the guy that will be that number three receiver initially, especially with Michael Gallup not in the fold. But I think by the end of the year, you're going to see a lot more of Jalen Tolbert, not only on special teams as a return man, but also as that third wide receiver and they go back into 11 personnel. Expect number 18 to be on the field quite a bit. Yeah, and just keep in mind, it's a long season and for rookies making the transition, Jalen Tolbert had a very nice final season at South Alabama, but there is a transition period. He's got the maturity, he's got the work ethic, he's got the smarts, he's got all of that and the talent, uh, but it, it just uh, traditionally, it's taken a little bit longer sometimes, but by midseason, I say, I think the same thing. Jalen Tolbert could really be a key part of this offense. All right, when we come back, the Cowboys doing some great things in the community. The Blitz was brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Often imitated, never equaled the 2022 Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders Swimsuit Issue featuring America's sweethearts on the beautiful beaches of Mexico. Get your print or digital copy today at DallasCowboys.com slash star. Final couple of minutes here of the Blitz, and let's go behind the scenes right now. The Cowboys hosting the High School Diversity Coaching Summit. Welcome. First off, um, and this is a great opportunity for us. And really, I want to take this wherever you guys want to take it. All right, so I'll tell you how I've done it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the mistakes that I've made. Let's make this interactive as possible. Man, hey, man. appreciate you, baby. Yes, 
sir. We tell the scouts in the work, when I talked about accountability, run the roster. It's always difficult. Ain't nothing easy. You, you got dreams of what you want to be as a coach. Dreams without goals is going to set you up for disappointment. It's going to fuel disappointment. I mean, we just like anything, we're all, we're all in a position that we can continue to learn. Uh, so I really enjoyed the interaction. What a great day for those coaches here at the uh, Star, and you got an up-close look at it. Yeah, I, w I had the pleasure of emceeing the event and meeting a bunch of the guys that were a part of that group, and what an amazing uh, incentive that it was to get here because you not only got to hear from Coach Mike McCarthy, but you heard from Will McClay, you heard from Tashar Choice, who's now down at the University of Texas. Basically, the thought process behind the Nike Diversity Coaching Summit is to increase the number of diverse coaching candidates around the North Texas area. They did a great job of doing Doing so. All right, that does it uh, for the Blitz for this offseason. Training camp will be here before you know it. See you then.